Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in AITS Select Series and I've brought forward to you a problem that troubles students a bit. Uh, it's based on Eredo 4.9 and also has appeared in a different form in a previous KVPY examination. And the reason for picking it up from an AITS paper instead of directly solving these problems is this AITS question, which is a slightly modified version, offers a bit more to understand. And that's why I have taken it up. Okay. And to uh, make sure that it is potentially an important concept for a future JE problem and to ensure the students who are following this video have enough practice of such concept, I've included four practice problems in an increasing level of difficulty at the end of this video. So stay tuned till the end in order to ensure that the concept enrichment takes place okay so let me move forward and try to show you the problem statement first so here's the problem statement and uh, one or more than one correct options might be there so if you want to have an unbiased try pause the video here try it out for four or five minutes and do come back for the concept first and then the solution of the problem and also the four practice problems at the end. Okay, so here we go with the formal reading of the question. A body is executing SHM on a straight line x-axis with time period two seconds and amplitude one centimeter. Assume that the probability of the body to be between x equal to minus a, a is one, right? So amplitude to x equal to plus a is one. That's obvious. That is where you can certainly find the particle in between that big region, but probability of finding the particle within a small region that is a dx region is defined as dp the probability of particle having a speed from v to v plus dv is again dp then you have to find the distribution functions of dp by dx and dp by dv and plot them against x and v respectively so the first two options if you carefully observe is the probability distribution over space versus space and the second one is probability distribution over the speed uh, function versus the speed function. Okay, so you can write it in the form of velocity by assigning a minus sign to one of the uh, directions. Okay, right. So I hope you have given it a fair try. Let me move forward. So before I define the concept here in the problem, a humble request as always to save the channel in order to keep me motivated. Uh, and produce videos from my hectic schedule, I would request you to at least give a like to this particular video because the liked videos get propagated across YouTube uh, as per the YouTube algorithm, the way it is designed. That's how it is. Uh, so I hope you understand my genuine request and keep giving me the support that you have been given, especially the old subscribers who have been following this channel. And in case you are new, uh, please understand the enormity of the situation. So if the channel doesn't get propagated or get liked, uh, then I had to actually uh, stop producing the videos on this and maybe find some other platform in which I can uh, share knowledge. Okay. so. Once that request is done, <clears throat> let me move forward. So we'll start off with the basic conceptual calculation first. Okay. Right. We may divide the journey of the particle from minus A to plus A. So you can see the right hand side. Right. A lot of things are on the board, as I keep saying in my videos, um, just follow my voice and also where I point instead of reading through the entire thing on your own. You need to be a bit patient and then you'll be rewarded with the concept. OK, so look at the right side. I have depicted the motion of the particle between the minus A coordinate to plus A coordinate with zero being the mean position. We can divide this journey into a lot of small observational periods of DT. And one such DT period is between the particle being at x to x plus dx. So simple language for the first point. Then the probability dp of finding the particle between this region would be simply given by dt period divided by the total time period. That's obvious, right? So it has traveled during the dt period divided by two. And there's a two factor because there is a to and fro motion, right? Um, if particle is moving towards right, then it also will at a later stage take same amount of time in order to move towards left through the same window. And that's the reason for putting the two up. So if the problem had asked the probability distribution function over time, it would have been a uniform function, but it is not practically useful. The reason is very simple. Whenever you are dealing with any probability distribution and you want to practically show that on any pictorial or a graphical variations, you set up a camera and try to 
take snapshots of the particle randomly at different positions, which means you are actually dividing these intervals into equal space intervals of dxs and trying to locate the particle. Okay, so more practical way of representing the probability would be a dp by dx rather than dp by dt. Okay, in order to convert this x to t and t to x, we need to take the basic SHM equations in one dimension, and you could see all of you would be able to uh, appreciate these things. X is a sin omega t, a standard form of SHM that I have assumed here. And when you write velocity function, it would be as a function of position like this. And rearranging this, this would be a more meaningful way of writing it because it depicts the kinetic energy term, potential energy term, and equal to constant. So some of, right, obviously, some constants are missing here, but this should be the way of writing the energy conservation. Okay. Now, giving you the idea that uh, the uh, particle is going to have different probabilities at different positions, we should realize that, uh, let me show you a simple animation of the SHM. So if you have uh, looked at an SHM, in this case, x-axis is taken in vertical form, so that I can write x versus t graph. So whenever the particle moves through the mean position, it goes faster. So for any camera, which is positioned in the mean mean position, or that means the middle points, right? It will be uh, finding the particle to be a less probable to be present because it's moving faster. Whenever you go to the extreme position, particle stays in a certain DX window for a longer duration. So the camera will be able to locate that particle in the extreme positions more often as compared to the mean positions. I'll show you a, strobo a stroboscopic photograph also in which you uh, take a particle motion and you switch on and off the lights at equal intervals of time. And then you take the photograph of the particle and these photographs are overlapped on one another. And in that, the crowded nature of the uh, particle snapshots at the extreme position will depict the same thing. Okay, so let me show you that also. Right. So let me read out the last line that I tried to talk about before I show you the stroboscopic photograph. If we divide the region between x equal to minus a to x equal to plus a into equal dxs and try to capture stroboscopic images, that means you switch on and off the light and take the snapshots of the particle in equal intervals, we expect the dp presence, that is the presence of particle or probability of the locating particle to be higher in those dx windows where the particle goes slower so that you can capture them, okay? So with that understanding, if we move forward, yeah, this right-hand side, I've taken a stroboscopic photograph of a pendulum. Obviously, pendulum is not a linear SHM, but for small amplitudes, you can consider this to be a straight line on the right side. You could see for equal intervals, random snapshots were taken, and the bob of the pendulum, right, and you might be uh, confused in thinking these are many pendulums. No, it's a single pendulum, taken snapshots at random periods, and then all those snapshots are overlapped. And you could see the crowded nature of these presence of the bobs at the extreme positions and less dense population in the middle, telling you that the probability of locating the particle at the extreme position, because it is traveling slower, is higher. That's the uh, practical understanding of what is meant by dp by dx. Okay, so once you understand the practical calculation, we'll try to borrow the uh, previous space dp is equal to in terms of dt and forcibly in, in, uh, introduce a dx. Okay, so I divide by dx, I bring dt down, write it as dx by dt, and in one dimension it is velocity, and I'll borrow this expression for velocity here. And t into omega is 2 pi, and 2 gets cancelled, and you end up getting this expression. Okay, now here is another trick. He, because in the question paper, he has asked for a dp by dv also as a diagram. He never asked you to calculate. Let's suppose he asks only the shape of the graph. Then you can use this mathematical idea. Because the v square and omega, uh, x square summation by a constant is equal to a constant, summation of v square and x square, the mathematics recognizes v to be an equivalent variable as compared to x. Yeah, physics of v and x are different, but because of this equation in SHM, the v and x maths will recognize them as to be equivalent. Therefore, with some constant removal and from here to here, that's why I wrote the proportionality, you can bravely suggest that dp by dv should also have a similar format. That means the graph of dp by dx and graph of dp by dv versus their respective x and v, right, will be the same answer. You could go ahead and trick 
I'll give the actual calculation in the next slide, but I think you appreciate the way that happens. In any other motion, you may not have the same logic because the X and V will not have the same uh, degree of the polynomial. Okay, so we will see those in practice problems where I might change the uh, way the particle is traveling and you end up getting different probability distributions for position and velocity. Okay, so here's the calculation for dp by dv. It's straightforward now. I think you got the idea. When you divide by dv, you get this time dv by dt, which is acceleration magnitude. And you get omega square x and you can convert omega square x into v square. As I told you, with different constants of proportionality, you'll get the similar function. So options b and option c from the given question are correct. And you could see the shape of that particular probability distribution functions are similar. Okay, now let's see what KVP has done in the past. How can this question be asked? Okay, so this was uh, how the KVPY actually rephrased the question and used that stroboscopic snapshot or random snapshots, right? So you could see that the person is taking random snapshots between minus A to plus A and a histogram or a bar graph is drawn for the uh, number of events that have been captured. Most possible event would be, that means he's asking about the probability distribution indirectly here. He's not using that word, but uh, in a clever manner, in a practical manner, he's enticing students to answer this question. And obviously you should have gone for the option C based on what we did in our calculation. Okay, we can expect similar kind of, uh, uh, you could say modifications by JE also in the future. And that's where the practice problems become very, very important. Okay, so let me move forward. Before I give you the practice problems, uh, these are other photographs, right? So this was the rightmost one is the stroboscopic image of any pendulum. The same thing, if you uh, take the time exposure snapshots, okay, so many such photographs are taken from one particle, you could see the density of the presence of that particle at the extreme positions is larger. And somewhere in the middle, you could see that it's uh, thinner in population. So same logic, different way of expressing it. You can express it in the graph paper also, where we have taken these uh, dots as the points of observation. And you could see those points are much, much closer when at extreme positions here and here, and are much farther in terms of the DX when uh, you take it through mean position. That's what is written here. I think you can read it out and understand and appreciate what we are doing mathematically. It's not just the maths, you need to understand the physics part of it also. So, okay, so before we move on to the practice uh, problem again, one important bonus point, um, not important for JE advanced, but maybe for your Olympiads, not even for INPHO, it's much higher level, wherein you should realize that classical probability that we were doing, right? When the one that we did was the classical mechanics where you were able to distinguish and uh, talk about a specific velocity and specific position for a particle, which is not allowed in a quantum mechanics oscillator. That means a particle which is obeying quantum mechanics, you cannot depict the velocity and position simultaneously. So when you go to higher level physics, the same probability distribution for a particle in SHM using quantum mechanics would be slightly different. And that is given by this wave function, which also takes similar shape in terms of its envelope, but it's much, much tougher to solve okay so this is shown just to create some kind of interest in higher level physics as we move along and you take up these higher level subjects these kind of things will be encountered by you but not for your inpho or even je advance okay before you move on to the practice problem these are the ways to connect with me the top three ones are for the academic purposes discord server telegram doubts group and the website where all these videos are put up in a uh, topic wise manner and the bottom three are just the social media presence for the students, not students, the others who want to communicate with me. All these uh, links are in the about me section of this channel. Uh, please try to go there and explore as per your need. And regarding the website, trying to elaborate um, in order to use the website uh, for the beginners, I have made a video on how to use it. The link of that uh, particular video is in the description below or on the I button above. Try to go through it. And if you're new, all the arrangement of these chapter wise videos will help you revise things faster. There are 260 plus videos on this channel. Watching them as quickly as possible will give you edge over others in the JE advanced exam as was proven in the last two years. Okay, and here comes the practice problems. I picked up the first two from the short answer questions of HC Verma. You can read the sixth on your own. The seventh one is the one which is pertaining to the concept we did. In our uh, time period measurement 
of pendulum experiment, uh, we have to count the number of oscillations as a part of our procedure. So in order to count the number of oscillations, there are two ways of doing it. You can count them from mean position or you can count them from extreme. And you are generally asked to count it from uh, extreme position, right? Uh, so is it extreme or mean that you are supposed to do is what you are uh, supposed to answer in this question. So whether this question is correct or not, and if it is correct or if it is wrong, what was the reason? So please make sure you comment your response in the comment section below along with the timestamp. Timestamp is very important as the video grows older, it would be difficult for me to navigate. Okay, so I'll come up with the response in physics surgery quickies. The second, uh, the third question is extension of the question in the video, right? You could see I copy pasted the entire part here. And in the bold one, we are extending that. I'll define a P of X as the probability of finding the particle to the left of X. That means uh, DP is for a DX finding. P of X is a cumulative probability to the left of X. If I define it like that, you are supposed to find these three values. P of minus one is the probability of finding the particle to the left of minus one. Similarly, one and the mean position using these three, you should be able to actually write the value of the P of X. So let's see how many of you do it. In case you struggle in commenting with the timestamp below, I'll come up with the solution of it in the Quizix Sajik Quickies. The last one is the most exciting one. So this I'll solve in the Physics Sajik Originals. Uh, you can see a stroboscopic picture of a ball under elastic collision, so it's a projectile motion of a ball, it hits the floor, E is equal to one, and goes to the same height again, and so on and so forth. So when this continuous motion is happening with a maximum height of H, imagine you are drawing a dotted line somewhere in the middle, dividing the motion into two halves, upper H by two and lower H by two. Question is very simple. Find the probability of finding the ball in the upper half of its motion above the dotted line shown at any instant after the motion has started. You could appreciate the stroboscopic photograph again as the ball's random snapshots give you denser pictures at the top because it's traveling slower, as I suggested in the video. And you could see much more less dense population at the bottom because it's quick, going quickly and camera finds it difficult to actually uh, locate it. Okay, so that's the meaning of probability distribution. Okay, so let's hope you solve it and comment it along with the timestamp. And let's see how many of you get it correct, right? So if you want to see and enjoy more such SHM problems, uh, please try to go through the subtopic playlists of SHM. I think two of them are there, linear and angular SHM separately. They are there in the description below. So try to explore them. Apart from that, a Discord server is an important source for all the doubts and uh, problem solvings from uh, previous papers, Jan Carla's uh, workout sheets and Olympiad sources, AITS, and even uh, some standard textbooks. Chapter-wise, uh, doubt solving happens there. So if you're new, you want to know what it is about, I have done a video on this. The video tutorial link is in the description below or I button above. Try to see, join the 3K subscriber plus Discord server where serious aspirants are there. So don't want to miss out on that. So please make sure you spend one or two days. You don't like it, you can log out, okay? And apart from AIT select series that you are watching right now, there are many other parallel series. I wrote only four on the board. There are many more. All those links uh, are in the description below. So try to go through as per your need. You want Pathfinder solutions, try to explore them. Try to set a timetable, watch all of them within 10 to 15 days. Uh, and you should be able to compete with others who have been following this channel for a long time, okay? And one last and final request uh, with such quality that is being served to you, uh, the channel uh, expects you to uh, give a like and please try to share the content. And like is a minimum thing that is coming free for you and doesn't take much time. It is some kind of gratitude that you should be showing back and is what is expected to keep me going and producing more and more such videos from the hectic time uh, or schedule that I have. Okay, so thanks for staying this long and listening to me. I appreciate your company and see you in the next video.